Harry and Rosie trick Santa. Hello, everybody. My name is Natasha, and His Royal Highness Prince Bertie the Frog has commanded me to tell you the story, Nori, of how Harry and Rosie tricked Santa, by Ang Harried Lin. Now, here's a piece of gossip I just picked up about Bertie. Well, this morning. I've heard that Bertie was sitting by the pond with his friend Tim the tadpole. I've got an idea," said Bertie. "Let's play a trick on Colin the carp. He's always grumping around his pond and making me really fed up." "What's a trick, Bertie?" said Tim. "Oh, well, it's when you sort of make things up to fool somebody," said Bertie. Tim wagged his tiny tail enthusiastically. "I know, I know," he said. "I'll pretend to be a giant fire-breathing dragon, and then he'll be really scared." Bertie looked at Tim, who was only a few millimeters long, and said, "I don't think that's going to work, Tim." "It will, it will," said Tim. "Look, here comes Colin now," and sure enough, Colin was swimming right towards them. Just then, Tim leapt out, looking as ferocious as he could. Rah! He said, very quietly, but he was so small that Colin didn't even notice him. Just then, Bertie saw Barker the dog. There's a bone in the pond, Barker. He hissed. Woof, woof! Shouted Barker, running up to the pond and jumping in with a huge splash. Colin was thrown up in the air and quickly swam down to the bottom of the pond to hide in some mud, because he didn't like Barker very much. Well, I think you scared Colin," said Bertie, beaming down at Tim. "You'd make a great dragon, little Tim," and he laughed. "Now, on with the story," he commanded. As it happens, today's story is all about tricking people as well. It's a special story for Christmas time, called "How Harry and Rosie Tricked Santa." It was a few days before Christmas. Mum was in the kitchen preparing dinner. Harry and Rosie lay on the living room floor watching TV. "I want that for Christmas," said Rosie, as a baby cry cry appeared on the screen. "And that," she added, as a magical musical mobile appeared. Then an advert came on for a dancing teddy bear. Want that too? Said Rosie. You have to write a list for Santa, said Harry. Otherwise, he won't know what you want. But I can't write, said Rosie, who was only three and a half. Suddenly, she had an idea. You write, Harry, she said. Harry groaned. Although he could write. It took him a really long time. He had only just finished his own letter to Santa. I can't," said Harry. "It will take too long. Ask Mum to do it." "Mum," said Rosie, wailing as she made her way to the kitchen. "Harry won't write my Christmas list." Mum helped Rosie write her Christmas list. When they had finished. They put the list up the chimney behind the fireplace in the living room. But how will Santa get my letter? Asked Rosie. "Do," said Harry, who had turned off the TV and was waiting for something to eat. He sends Rudolph or one of the elves to pick it up. But why doesn't he come himself? Asked Rosie. "I want to meet him." "You can't meet him," said Harry. Why not? Asked Rosie. Because he doesn't want children to see him," said Harry. "But I want to see Santa," said Rosie, wailing. "I really, really want to see him." Rosie really, really, really wanted to see Santa. She talked about it all the time. In the end, Mum promised to take her to a department store to see him. So one morning they set off for the shops, nice and early. But even though they were there early, 
there were still lots of people queuing to see Santa. I'm afraid the wait will be two hours, said a kind looking lady in a smart store uniform. Oh no, said Harry, we can't wait two whole hours. But I want to see Santa, said Rosie. It is a long time to wait, said Mum. We could just go to the toy department or the cafe for a cake instead. Yes, said Harry. No, said Rosie. I want to wait. So they waited and waited, and Harry felt tired and hungry and thirsty and bored. But Rosie said she would be really sad if they didn't get to meet Santa. Suddenly, Harry had an idea. He whispered in Rosie's ear so that Mum wouldn't hear him. I know, he said. We could trick Santa. He told Rosie his plan and she thought it was a very good one. Rosie tugged at Mum's sleeve. Actually, she said, I don't mind if I don't meet Santa. I'd rather have a cake. So the children and their mother had cake and drinks and then they went to look at the toys. But they didn't buy anything because it was so close to Christmas and they would have so much to open on the day. It was the evening of Christmas Eve and Harry and Rosie were laying out a plate of mince pies for Santa. Harry fetched a plate from the cupboard and Rosie carefully placed some mince pies on the plate. Then Harry fetched a carrot from the fridge and put it next to the mince pies. Shall we leave out a glass of milk too? said Rosie, who always liked a glass of milk herself before she went to bed. Yes, OK, said Harry, opening the fridge and getting out the carton. Harry and Rosie laid out the snacks and then they went upstairs to get everything ready for the trick they were to play on Santa. Rosie fetched the torch from Daddy's toolbox so that she would be able to see in the dark. Harry fetched Rosie's skipping rope and put it under the bedclothes. Harry and Rosie each had their own room, but because it was Christmas, Mum and Dad said they could sleep in the same room, so Dad had put up the camp bed in Rosie's room for Harry to sleep on. Harry and Rosie went downstairs to say goodnight to their parents. Can we go to bed now? said Rosie. Mum looked very surprised. I don't think I've ever heard you ask to go to bed before, Rosie, she said. I suppose you really, really want your Christmas presents, don't you? said Dad, looking up from the newspaper he was reading. Dad took the children up to bed. They laid out their stockings at the end of the bed. Shall I read your story? asked Dad, walking over to the bookcase. Actually, Dad, do you mind if we don't have one tonight? asked Harry. It's just we are waiting for Father Christmas. Oh, all right said Dad. Now be good and go to sleep. I don't want to hear you both talking all night. When Dad had gone, Rosie switched on the torch. She had to be sure not to fall asleep, otherwise the plan just wouldn't work. The door began to creak. Rosie sat up with a start. She must have been beginning to doze off. But when she switched on her torch... She saw it was just Harry going to the loo, not Santa after all. Rosie lay back down in bed and waited some more. She heard the door begin to open. Harry, she hissed to her brother. He was waiting with the lasso he had made from Rosie's skipping rope, ready to throw it round Santa so that he could not leave without speaking to them. The door opened and Mum walked in. Hello, children. I've just come to give you a kiss good night, she said. Harry, what are you doing with Rosie's skipping rope? It is time to go to sleep. After Mum had gone, Harry and Rosie sat up talking a little longer. Would Santa never come? Harry opened his eyes. It was still dark outside, but the stocking at the end of his bed which was more of a sack than a stocking really, was bulging. Rosie, said Harry, shaking his sister. Rosie, he's been! We missed Santa! 
Rosie sat up and began rubbing her eyes. Oh, but I really wanted to meet him, she said. Harry got out of bed and switched on the light. Shall we open them? he asked, looking at the presents. Instead of answering, Rosie dug her hand into her sack and pulled out a package. She ripped off the paper. Oh, she said, I don't want that. Harry looked to the football annual Rosie had discarded. He would have liked that himself. Oh well, he had his own presents to open. He ripped off the paper of the first one. A baby cry cry? No way. I don't want this, said Harry. Rosie by now had opened her second present. A toy aeroplane. Harry's second present was even worse than the first. A pink dress. The more presents they opened, the more disappointed the children became. Oh well, at least I can eat these, said Harry, pulling out a packet of sweets as he sat among a dancing teddy bear, a packet of hair clips and a book about fairies. Mum and Dad came into the room. Oh, you're all ready up, said Mum. How are your presents? Awful, said Harry. Horrid, said Rosie. What do you mean? asked Dad. Dad looked down at Harry's pile and then across at Rosie's. Do you think you may have got the wrong stocking? said Dad. Suddenly everything made sense. Harry leapt with joy onto the Thunderbird characters, the remote control boat and the football boots. Rosie kissed the baby cry cry. You know what, Rosie, said Harry. We were trying to trick Santa, but in the end, I think it was him who tricked us. And that was the story of how Harry and Rosie tricked Santa by Ang Harid Lin. If you're listening to this around Christmas time, Bertie the Frog wants to wish you a very happy Christmas and a wonderful holiday wherever you are in the world. I'll be back with another story nori soon. But for now, from me, Natasha, bye-bye.